Hello. It's uh, Writing Wednesday, and uh, I am up in Idlewild, California. Uh, I was just up here um, teaching a class at Idlewild Arts, which is a high, uh, arts high school. So that was very fun, always teaching um, high school kids. Uh, they're very lively, and uh, I generally, when I'm teaching, I try to not make the mistake of, of um, uh, squeezing too much information in at once. Um, but uh, I haven't been, um, I haven't taught high school students for a while. And uh, so it's very good. Hello, Alicia. Um, so this is Idlewild, California. And uh, I wrote a good chunk of uh, Marina uh, up here at Idlewild. Uh, um, my friends uh, who live next door, Eduardo Seviatigo, uh, is a writer and uh, his husband uh, let us stay there for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time working. Um, so we um, came up here and stoked, you know, the snow was high and the pines were covered and uh, uh, throwing in chunks of wood um, into the stove to uh, heat the cabin and uh, it helped me recreate the feeling of being in Russia a little bit more than uh, um, than being in Los Angeles does. Uh, and I wrote a great deal of the book up here. Uh, I rented a place for a while up here um, to, to work. So I came up maybe six months, or six weeks at one time and a month at another time and six weeks at another time. So I thought I would talk a little bit about getting away uh, to write. Uh, I know it sounds like a luxury, especially um, uh, in the times you need it most. Um, when my kids were little, my uh, daughter was little, um, I, all I need was just a little bit of peace and quiet. And if you can engineer it somehow, they, they have writer, writer's retreats. Uh, if you look in Poets and Writers, the difference between a writer's conference is where you get together and you workshop. Writer's retreat is about having a door that closes. And many of them have um, food delivered. I've never done a, writer's, a formal writer's retreat. Uh, what you do is you just think about your relatives and who's got a... Um, who's got a spare bedroom. <laughs> uh, people need to, if you're staying with relatives uh, or friends, they have to understand that you're, just because you're there, you're not gonna be necessarily socializing. You're just gonna be kind of the, the you know, the ghost in the woodwork. Um, you walk around and drink coffee and just because you're there doesn't mean that you're available for a conversation. Um, but anything can be a, writer's retreat. Um, when my mom was uh, uh, going through a long, uh, a long dementia, um, there were times that I just had to get away because funny when you're there, everybody calls you, everybody needs you. Um, but when you're not there, they find out that they can handle it themselves. Uh, so sometimes a little bit of a departure um, is, is so good not just for the writer but for those in the writer's world who um, sometimes real you know need to understand that they can do more than uh, they think they can uh, so getting away on retreat is uh, is fantastic some of them are um, there are scholarships, uh, some of them offer scholarships, and then some of them are very informal. It's just finding mm -hmm. some cheap motel or somewhere to, to um, you know, just somewhere to hole up for a few weeks and just, you know, even a few days. Especially if you've gotten to a place that uh, you're really in a twist about something and the phone keeps ringing and you have to get dinner and you have to do this and you have to and you're just driving yourself crazy um, a wonderful time to get away um, off season you can often rent cabins um, in uh, you know you can rent cabins in the mountain in the winter 
if there's no recreation or skiing or anything really cheap uh you can rent uh places in the desert in the summertime really cheap because you know who would go there except uh somebody who just wants to get away from people uh some people wonder well if i do a retreat isn't that a lot of pressure you know what if what if i panic i just sit there and stare at a blank page you know what if i don't use the time how, how do i make sure that i don't uh, uh become paralyzed uh, suddenly i do have the time so all the excuses i make of why i can't write um then i'm i'm looking at them right in the head and uh um so it does help to have a little bit of a plan uh what are you going to work on um make sure to bring all your uh notebooks and your research anything you need just get a couple of boxes and fill them with the books that you're likely to need um and uh i don't know you know going by yourself versus going with other people i uh um would normally go by myself but i'm married to a writer and he is quite capable of lying on the couch for hours reading a book or writing his own stuff and uh you know occasionally he'll you know we'll put some sausage in a can of soup and eat eat together um but it's not a vacation it is um clearing space for your work and uh So having a plan is really important. What exactly am I going to do when I get there? Not just I'm getting away from all those phones and stuff. Uh I want to sleep late and goof around. You can goof around at home. Uh or take a vacation vacation, but retreat is um a way to really be with your work all day and all night. All that I've envied um uh when i was younger oh, god i envied people who were single and childless and who could just work for 12 hours at a time so getting away is your chance to uh have 12 hours at a time and although i love the, i mean i do love the mountains and uh it's great for uh the russian novel because it's cold and you've got you stuck in the stove and stuff but often being in a beautiful place uh is hard on uh the writer in retreat that sometimes being in a place that's just there's nothing but the room and your work um staying in an air you know an airport hotel always appealed to me uh to just go and be in a place where you can get the chicken caesar salad on room service and just stay in the room and just completely be in this world that you're creating. I mean, that's the great thing about um getting away to write is bit getting away from your life, not to go on vacation and, you know, should I go bike riding or work? No, you know, you're on retreat for the work. So, um I can't uh, I can't recommend it enough uh uh two weeks in the woods i mean a month in the woods uh without internet good luck you'll be out there on the road with your phone looking for a signal <laughs> but at least you won't be on it all the time uh you know this is a time to just tell everybody that i and you can do it at home you can tell everybody that you're the, you're away <laughs> and just not answer the phone not go out not do anything it's hard to do if you have kids uh sometimes the kids need to go away and you just but it's harder to kind of create that silent place uh for yourself at home because you know the water heater needs fixing you know that the roof has a problem you know that you're getting water into your garage and so even if you decide not to think about that it's it's still there it's still sucking little bits of your energy away so to get away and um work in somebody else's space um you know if i work in my friend's cabin and they have problems with their water heater it's like their water heater 
and it doesn't take any psychic space. Um, I have a friend, uh, a writer named Mary Raykow, who lives up in San Francisco, who says that the smaller her living space, the more peace of mind she has. Um, it's uh, tempting. You know, whenever I can be somewhere where it's not my water heater that's broken, uh, it's it allows me to completely inhabit my work from the moment I get up in the morning. I can take a nap when I get tired. I get up, and I'm back in it, and I'm back in it, and I'm back in it. And uh, uh, it's a great way if you are getting you're up against something specific that's really, really been hard, and you just can't seem to break through. To take a you know if you can possibly take some time. Uh, go somewhere where there's no distractions to just, and your assignment is to get through whatever this piece that's been making you crazy. And th then you can try, you can try exercise, you can try it from another point of view, you can try to solve uh, the problem in a, uh, f not in a plot way, but in a, you know, it, with the writing itself, maybe a change of form. Um, yeah, the the kids and the retreat. You have to, you know, get relationships with people where you take their kids for a stretch of time. They can take your kids for a stretch of time. Uh, that's when you need the writer's retreat uh, most is when you have the super-packed family life. Uh, but you always need it. Um, there are times where there's just too much life in your life. There's just too much going on. And... Uh, you know, well, that's a good thing in general. Um, um, it it sucks energy that you need for your work. Um, yeah, cold weather. I, I think that to go on retreat at the beach is really uh, not conducive to uh, concentration. That cold weather is really it is cold, foggy weather. I got a lot done when I was uh, there. Was a retreat. Um, a fellowship in uh, that I got in uh, uh, San Juan Islands, uh, the Whiteley Center, and you pay a little bit for that. It's not free, but um, uh, I'm in a cabin uh, on San Juan Island. It was foggy and cold, and you want to stay in and work. So yeah, and a, a lot. So a lot of the times. The best places to go are cheap because they're out of season. It's cold and ridiculous. So um, uh, I thought I'm a very sociable person. So in fact, for me, it's more important to be able to get away because I have trouble monitoring that myself. I let people, um, you know, they come to me with problems or something exciting, and I get involved in what they're doing, and you know, instead of focusing on what I'm doing. Um, Idlewild has, uh, it, it's nice because it's a mountain town that doesn't have any sports, it doesn't have a lake, it doesn't have boating, it doesn't have anything. So it's very quiet and traditionally there's a lot of arts going on here. Um, but, you know, I've stayed in a basement in Portland, Oregon with relatives. I've, uh, I've you know, been on I I islands, uh, usually in the fog. Um, you know, anybody who has a guest room who is, um, understands, you know, to leave a writer alone. Uh, what questions do you have today? I just taught uh, 13 high school students uh, about creative writing, which was, um, um, you know, it's always a challenge of how much information, you know, there's a balance between how much information uh, you can give people and then how much they need to... Um, participate and share and and uh, getting that balance uh, at every age level is very different. Um, so I haven't taught high school students for a while and uh, it it it, um, it requires um, probably more uh, activities than uh, that I had provided. So <laughs> they learned a lot, but I don't know. <laughs> how much they're going to retain of it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, what else can I, what else can I talk about? Um, 
Yeah, to go to a place that's similar to uh, an environment to the uh, what you're writing about is really, really helpful. You know, write about Russia in L.A. in the summertime is like, it's really hard. Um, so anything that gives you more sense detail on what where where you uh, uh, the location of your book is really helpful. Um, yeah, everybody writes better in the cold and gloom, unless you're already gloomy and need to need to uh, brighten up a little bit. Oh, panel at the book festival. I had a great panel at the book festival. Uh, uh, the LA Times Festival of Books was this last weekend, and I had a panel, Epics Old and New. Uh, so I was representing the Russian epic uh, with Marina M., and I was on the panel with uh, Madeline Miller, whose new book is Circe. She'd won the the Orange Prize, I think, for the Song of, U of Achilles. And I love the myths. Um, there's a lot of mythology even in the Russian novel. Uh, and um, so that was great. I saw Patricia Smith twice, the poet. Um, I saw her read, and then I saw a panel she was on. And she was wonderful. And she was talking a lot about form and how when you're writing very difficult things, sometimes setting yourself a formal um, framework for it um, helps distract a little bit from the intensity of what you're trying to create, of what you're writing, the emotional experience. And in fiction, you can certainly do that. Um, you know, you can write in single lines, you can write uh, in discrete paragraphs. Um, you can, um, you know, make various structures that that uh, uh, the form itself becomes um, something of interest that that helps you um, shape your, you know, sometimes really intense emotional ex um, scenes. So uh, watching her was amazing. Um, the panel had been on power and or beauty and trauma so there was a question about what beauty was um, and Patricia was basically saying it's not quite beauty you're looking for it's power how do you muster power into your expression and uh, uh, she says that form the beauty of the form the beauty of the language the it's making it interesting it's making um, it's this value added. It's it's what, ever you know, you can have your story of trauma, but how is it different than anybody else's story of trauma? You know, then it has to do with the writing, with the form. So um, that was a great panel. Uh, there was a great panel. Um, uh, Jeff Dyer, Linnell George, and uh, Karen Yamashita had a panel where they had worked on uh, uh, narrative and photography. And I was especially interested in Jeff Dyer's new book, uh, which is about the street photographer Gary Winograd. He took a uh, 100 Winograd images and wrote uh, 100 short pieces relating to the photographs in some way. Uh, which is a fabulous form, a wonderful way to write fiction, you know, or nonfiction. But you know, for me, as a as a, a prompt for writing short 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 groups of short shorts uh, strung together <coughs> by photography, what an interesting way to go. And then you don't even actually need the photographs necessarily. Uh, it's just that they will become thematically related. So that was an incredible panel. Um, what else did I see? Uh, lots of lots of writers. I spent some time talking to Luis Urea, who has a new book called House of Broken Angels, which I'm dying to read. He's, he's a brilliant guy. And Circe, the woman on my panel, I, I'm dying to read that. Circe, the sorceress in the Odyssey. Um, and Marina's sort of odyssey. Um, I tried to stay away from that t title, but uh, all journeys like that are, are odysseys, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, seeing all those readers, you think, oh, who's reading, you know, who's going to read this book? But then 
there's a whole hall of people who are, you know, reading everything, super interested. So here's a question. Can I talk about retreats I went on before I was published? I went on no retreats before I was published. Um, I didn't think I deserved it. I didn't know that there were retreats I could apply to. Um, I was pretty much in the outer planets. And um, there are retreats that are sort of fancy and you have to apply to them and you get rejected and I hate all that stuff. Uh, so I tend to just go my own way and you know, pay as I go or stay with friends. Or, but there are wonderful retreats. Um, there's Hedgebrook for women up in the San Juans. There's uh, this Whiteley Center, um, that, which is University of Washington. There's, uh, you know, the classics, uh, Yaddo and McDowell. There's a U-Cross in uh, Wyoming or Montana, so somewhere in the um, inner mountain west. Uh, and boy, that looks glorious. Um, so Poets and Writers has a ton of them listed. Um, so that's always an interesting thing to apply to. I'm just not big into applying to things. I, I tend to create my own thing. I, um, I don't know if that's a kind of classic or just stubborn or uh, rejection of verse, or uh, I don't know what that might be, but uh, um, yeah, it never occurred to me to get away uh, from my life. I mean, I wanted to, but I didn't give myself permission. I didn't think that before I was published, I didn't think I deserved it, or I wasn't important enough. I'm not a real writer, um, you know, because I haven't published anything. Um, Never gave myself permission to do it and value myself enough. So don't do what I do. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, in, uh, in retreat, you, you know, my hours, I, I, I will wake up in the middle of the night and work. Um, I don't do a regular day. I'll, uh, uh, wake up and then sleep and wake up again, sleep and, and uh, fall into a really different rhythm. I like to work at night. Sometimes when I'm really stuck, there's something about the silence that's really helpful to me. So I'll do that. Um, when you're in a new circumstance, it, it opens up your senses. So keeping track of new sense phenomenon, new abilities to describe, um, you know, how, how would you describe a, a Jefferson Pine to somebody who'd never seen one? How would you describe, you know, the, the spruce versus the pine versus the... Um,